This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast 506. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, and I do have a dog cam this week. Uh, it's just dog butt peeking out from behind that computer over there, but uh, they, they, either way, we'll see how that goes during the course of the show. Also with me, um, his dog just had surgery. Uh, so <laughs> Dave Potter joining me tonight as the co-host. How you doing, sir? Oh, good. Thanks for having me, Sork. Of course, of the Tiny Shutter Podcast, Prof Pod on the social medias. Oh yes, uh, yeah, pretty much, pretty much everywhere between pictures and yelling and screaming. Absolutely, after all it is twenty twenty. Um, it, it sounds like everybody else um <laughs> has been involved in the hospital today. So, uh, Chilla had a a, a family emergency. And uh, I, it's, it's taking care of the kids. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, you, the kids are going to be great. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, Katie, actually, um, um, she had her surgery in relation to her breast cancer today, uh, to which she had um, asked and, of course, um, uh, decided to flash Pittsburgh for one last time. As pictured, if you're with us on the video, go follow her uh, uh, Instagram at Kate Marie PGH or Kate Utters on the Twitter for for that imagery. Um, so, I mean, you know, I, if there's a bird watcher down at the point, they got a show. OK, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're without this week. Uh, uh, there are messages. Uh, surgery sounds like it was a success. And I uh, already have a, a picture of her smiling face uh, post surgery in my uh, messages. So um, good, good. That sounds like everything went great today. So um, some good vibes there for recovery. So um, this is the Awesome Cast. You can check out everything at awesomecast.com. You can also hit us up on our social media, Awesome Cast on the Twitter, the Awesome Cast Facebook page. And, of course, please join the Facebook group for Awesome Cast. A lot of great discussion and, th- and stories that you guys have shared throughout the week that often gets into the show. Um, so... It's a, it's a nice it's a nice awesome convergent for everybody, and we do discuss all the topics uh, throughout the week, so it's a it's a good community uh, to drop into. Please, uh, if you're joining us live right now, whether it be on Facebook or YouTube or Twitch or on the Periscope Twitter side of things, please hit the star, hit the like button, hit the favorite button, hit the share button most definitely, so this can help get out there. Hit a watch party if you're in Facebook, however that fits, so more people can check out the awesome cast and uh, and, and hang with you in the chat room as well. And of course, we're keeping an eye on, on most of those chat rooms as well. I see Steve's in the chat room as well. Uh, um, um, Amanda and him are leaving Erie, pulling for Darius 100%. See, they're in the car watching. I'm hoping responsibly, more listening than anything. Uh, so thank you for dropping in on that. Um, side note, if you happen to have like Google Music, YouTube Music, YouTube Premium, you can bring us up on the YouTube. I used to do this all the time with uh, This Week in Tech. I bring us up, like I, I listen live when I had to drive all over the place. Um, I pull it up live for whatever show was on on their live feed on YouTube and just listen to it in the background. Uh, it was an easy way to do it. And, uh, and that's a way that you can do it with us too. If you happen to be driving around at 7 PM Eastern time every Tuesday, uh, that was a long way to say, please join us. Uh, <laughs> also please subscribe to the podcast for awesome gas and subscribe to rate us on there, subscribe and rate us on there. And, uh, as well. And thank you to our audio partners, our friends at the 405 media.com and post industrial audio post industrial.com. There's a great newsletter with, uh, uh, everything you need to know in the rust belt, at least, um, with whether it be coronavirus or protests or, 
or or uh, whatever is going on in the world. Um, that's that's one thing that really helped me through uh, the coronavirus um, early days for sure when they uh, pivoted to that. Also, thank you to our Patreon supporters, our friends at the Coffee Club level at patreon.com slash awesomecast, uh, Matt Weller, John DeGore, and John Carmen, and our friends at the Fan of the Show level, Michael Fedor, uh, our friends at pghmuseums.org, our friend at professorbuzzkill.com, and I, I was listening to some Professor Buzzkill over the weekend about uh, Hitler and gun control. Uh, I know, rousing topics, but no, actually oh, yeah. very informative too, uh, you know, especially around everything. But, um, and uh, of course, hey, Dave Potter supports us as well at the Tiny Shutter Podcast. Thank oh, you, yes. Dave. <laughs> oh, welcome. And, and let me throw an extra little thing in for a Professor Buzzkill mm-hmm. um, for his POS Saturday recently about the Croatian leader during World War II. Really fascinating topic. Mm hmm. I'm admittedly a little depressing, especially since, you know, the last name is kind of Croatian on my end. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that, but so so I've always had this like, I'll see a topic and think, man, I, I don't know if that's anything I really know or care about, know mm-hmm. to care about. Right. But it, it, it's without fail. If I jump into it. I will be informed and entertained. <laughs> so oh, yeah. it's worth it every time I do jump in. Like something like that. What, what Croatian? What was it? Croatian? It, it was. It was actually the Croatian leader during World War II who was a Nazi sympathizer. That okay. the Nazis actually told him, "You're a little too enthusiastic. Maybe you should slow down on the genocide. But, You're a little right, too much for right. us." So, so if it was like, like just Croatian <laughs> dictator, like I wouldn't have jumped into it, no. but you already got me more interested in it. So, um, but anyways, uh, so, so shout out to all of our friends of the shows, uh, there, uh, a lot of podcasts and, and websites, uh, uh, friends that have been supporting us and that's really appreciated. Um, so let's get into our awesome things of the week. Um, so, uh, you know what, Dave, I, I'm, I'm curious cause I'm not, I'm not sure what this, this is. Um, what is your awesome thing of the week? Sure. It's it, for me, it wasn't a like a physical thing. It is a P3R, which is the group that runs the Pittsburgh Marathon oh, okay. and a few other races mm-hmm. because of it being 2020. Everything went virtual this year, literally because their first rate, the the, the, for, the big first race they do is, of course, is the marathon in May. Mm-hmm. Had to go 100 percent virtual. The Liberty Mile, which is normally around this time, had to go virtual. Um, they're trying to go and do the Pittsburgh 10 miler, which is in early November fingers crossed, but they're giving a virtual option for that at least. Okay. But one thing they're doing is heavily supporting people and highlighting people doing virtual running. And unlike, let's say technology conferences where most of the people attending are just attendees, they're not participants. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, where it's, oh, we'll make it easy. We'll have our, you know, 10, 20 speakers and they can interact with people. And most of the people who are participating in these running events are your participants. You know, the fact that you do have the marathon with on mar- on Sunday marathon morning, you got 20,000 people down there plus running the race. Um, and the, the one that's happened that just was scheduled to happen now was and I'm wearing the shirt here. The there Great Allegheny Passage Relay. I don't know how much you can see it here, but I got it. Uh, okay. Is the idea was it's basically if you know the um, the the trail that runs pretty much from downtown Pittsburgh to Cumberland, Maryland, is a vert. It normally up to, up to this year was a relay race. So every they had, um, I believe it's twenty five stages where you have a team of eight and everyone would run one stage, you get into a van, get moved to the next one, you take your turns running it. And it would run middle of the night. I never actually ran it. Um, but this year, because they said, well, obviously we can't do this. There's no really way to socially distance, especially a race that's 150 miles long mm-hmm. from start to finish. We're going to do it virtual. So you can sign up online and they are using social media to really make sure everyone stays connected. So they're promoting, say, hey, when you after you run your thing, take a picture of yourself. We'll give you templates to fill out. So you can say what stage you ran, the distance where you ran it with, post it on social media, and they repost it once you tag them. So it gets everyone involved. They make it really easy to keep in, um, 
was like the team I was part of where, you know, make it easy for everyone to contact each other and keep up to date on, oh, I did, we each had three legs. So it's like, oh, I just finished, um, I was assigned leg, let's say 10. I just finished leg 10 today and I completed it. And you and the thing is, it's really nice is you can go on and post your virtual results right online. It makes it really easy. So they transition, which a lot of races haven't. A lot of races went from, we can't do it in person. We'll either offer you either a refund if they could, or we'll offer you the firm until next year, but we really can't do anything. Where oh. they heavily switched virtual and hitting the social media, and they even started a podcast mm -hmm. just I, I, just recently. I love this, and this is this is a bug that popped in my head in March when everything was going down. Was the we got to get creative about stuff? I've been saying that mm -hmm. for a while. Like, are the people are going to do well through this, or even grow through some of this? Are the people going to get creative of things? And events are a yeah. big th part of that. Uh, you and I are both part of a, a a certain project that that had to move virtual virtual. <laughs> basically yeah. at the last minute that that involves motorsports so that's fun uh but uh so so um if i can slide that into kind of this isn't my awesome thing of the week but it really pairs nicely that for you and i actually okay. didn't even have it on the rundown i don't know okay. why because i'm can't see the forest from the trees and i've had two calls about this this week um i'm actually involved um and in, in, uh, involved as in i have an assignment um there's fresh fest which is a uh, the 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 black uh, beer festival that's been going for several weeks uh, the oh, weeks man. years uh, uh the guys from the drinking uh the drinking partners podcast of course have been putting it on and uh and that was a thing that took over all of nova place over there on the north side right just mm -hmm. incredibly huge thing uh, and and I got to, I was uh, 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 there to help stream some of the stuff uh, last year as well. And they've been changing things up uh, where, again, everything went digital. I know Amanda that's out there listening right now, but she's driving responsibly while Steve is is, is watching in the, in the car. Uh, from what I understand, that was assured of me in the in the chat room. Um, but but and yeah, I'm sure you can still sign up since it's digital. But yeah, no, you sign up for yeah, you hear podcast dog in the background. Sorry oh, about yeah. that. Uh, but anyways, cut it out. I know I'm excited <laughs> about Fresh Fest too. But uh, Fresh Fest Digi Fresh Fest Digifest dot com is where you go there you get your digital ticket and um i believe you also get what two packs four styles eight beers 16 breweries 25 states so you actually get like you know through the app um you you, you get live music or live live painters musical acts breweries interviews all kinds of stuff um going on uh djs speakers um where, where i'm at we're going to be at a brewery where there's going to be a lot of interviews and some zoom interviews happening as well uh that will be conducting so like that's what you know that's you know a cool thing mm -hmm. and there's like six channels six or seven channels of content that's going to be going wow. on you just flip through to the day it's like you know we talk about the old pod camp or a conference where you just have these tracks instead of going from mm -hmm. room to room so easier on your feet and uh, you can have a brew at home along with this, I think, uh, yeah. uh, along with that. I don't know how that's happening. I, I wasn't sure about how they were pulling their, their small business workshops, collaborations. Um, so I, and I know, again, Amanda's out there, um, um, you know, and, and she's taken part of it and has her ticket for this weekend as well. So, um, but no, again, something that said, hey, we can throw this out for the year or we can figure out a new way to do it. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, like you said, mm -hmm. So people, you really just had to get creative. You have to step out of your, you know, say, okay, we have to do something different this year. Mm -hmm. And admittedly, I think the, I, I don't want to say smaller the organization, the easier it is. But if you're an organization of 10 to 15 people, let's say, you know, or, or not, 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 you're not talking hundreds. Mm -hmm. It's easy for everyone to get together and say, okay, here's where we're at. Mm -hmm. This is where we're going to reposition and everyone gets on board versus we're a T let's say you're a company of four to 500 hey. to make yeah. that change. It's a lot harder. Absolutely. It, it, it depends. It depends on like um, how good you are at pivoting. Right. right. You know, it, again, it's easier to pivot a, a smaller ship, but also where are your assets? I mean, there was a conversation about somebody else is doing something similar. Right? Like, you know, we talk about the cost of streaming versus the cost of the venue where everybody would attend. It was like, yeah. well, think about how much you're paying for whatever goes into all these people showing up in one place. I, you know, not knowing your funds, can that just shift over here to what the streaming in the cost yeah. to do 
a production that people can enjoy from home would be like where does that kind of line up and does that fit and and, and, and people have to think does that fit their goals for the project the event the the fundraiser whatever the case may be these are the kinds of converse, conversations that we've been having for months um i think both of us in our contacts yeah. so it, it's really interesting and, and and it's cool to see the people that are figuring it out you know mm-hmm. or, or or in and you know and figuring it out like you know you know, they, they, there's a lot of planning, and I'm sure everything will go go great. But there's also like a lot of learning too about what does and doesn't work when you start adapting things like this. You know, right. across the board. You know, uh, uh, there's a lot of <laughs> we've seen this with professional wrestling over the last several months. There's a lot of misses along with the hits. So uh, a lot of ad- adaptation, and, and 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 I'm not even saying like the indie guys from the indie guys to the to the WWEs. There have been hits and misses, so yep. it's been interesting. So uh, my actual awesome thing of the week, again, a side thing, and a shout-out to the guys at Fresh Fest. Just uh, some really, really cool stuff going on uh, out there. I was really interested in this article. Um, you know, of course, I, I, you know, we've been talking about it for for weeks now, and and I love the idea and subscribe to GeForce Now so I can play, which is up to like 49 of my uh, 250 Steam games are on there now. They, wow. So a uh, side, side awesome thing. Um, if you log in with your Steam account, it will actually sync with your Steam account what games are available on GeForce Now, which is great. Which I don't even have. I'm, like, I'm just not going to look to the list and, and search for stuff. It's like, oh, cool. There's that game that I didn't even think about looking for in this, and now I'm going to play it on GeForce Now. Of course, we talk about xCloud and other things. But this was a story um, where, and this is my biggest takeaway. The story itself is talking about how um, oh yeah, I'll accept all cookies. Not a visually interesting story for you guys, but um, uh, it, it, Ubisoft is signing a multi-year partnership with cloud gaming provider Parsec. I know it sounds like a Star Trek uh, uh, unit of measurement, which I think is what it is, um, <laughs> if I know my Trek. But uh, it, it's uh, it was also I've been watching and reading a lot of space stuff lately. Um, but anyways, I watched Another Life with Starbuck from Battlestar Galactica. It was interesting. It was it's, okay. it's if, it, if you're just like I can't wait for the next Lost in Space season to come, go ahead and watch it. Uh, anyways, other than that, uh, the point is Parsec. Okay, it's another one of these things like a, like a, a, a G Force Now or something. But okay. so what they did with it, um, Ubisoft had their event a couple weeks ago, right? And uh, uh, they unveiled you know more stuff about Assassin's Creed Valhalla and the next Watch Dogs game Legion, right? That mm-hmm. all should be coming out on your new Xboxes, Playstations, whatever the case may be. And I kept seeing all these things like about our journalists that played the game this weekend. I'm like, okay. And I'm like thinking, wait a minute. And actually, this just hit me. E3 didn't happen. How are the journalists going to play the games? You're not mm. going to send them a disc. You're not going to send them a disc. Yeah. So, turns out, they used Parsec to deliver demos Um. Uh, delivered demos to the journalists so they could play the games. Mm, so okay. you, so now you gave that access to a journalist, which you can rescind access, and that mm-hmm. won't get passed around, right? Ideally, I right. mean, within a certain time, you can like give it to us. Well, here, try to play a new Assassin's Creed, buddy of mine. You know, without his uh, without his credentials. Um, so that that is a really smart way and and we're at that point where you can do that digital delivery like that right like here here's this Mm -hmm. it's not downloading to your computer that you could hack at or something you know it's just digitally delivered streaming at that point of moment uh and it makes it also part of this uh cd project red they're the developer between cyberpunk 2077 the one that has keanu reeves in it that's coming out and which i think very soon actually that used GeForce Now, NVIDIA's GeForce Now cloud service, to allow press access to that game. So this is kind of cool. Uh, you know, Again, this is a very behind-the-veil uh, journalism uh, developer kind of thing, but a, a really cool other use of it than me paying my five bucks to play my Steam games on my, on my really shoddy um, fourth-gen <laughs> i5 from four years ago, right? Uh, or my phone or something, right? Like It's like, no, go play this and, and right, so you can do that. Because instead of making all of us go to Las Vegas and lose our feet. Right. <laughs> so. You know what? I kind of wonder, are uh, a lot of these people, a lot of these changes that people are making, and uh, apparently not an original thought, making now because they 
have to. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be, oh, 2021, you know, that worked pretty good last year. So we're just going to do this in the future because it worked good enough. And it was a lot easier for us. It was a lot easier for you. And these Mm -hmm. are probably changes we should have made. And you hate to say, and I hate the term. I know the term, you know, never waste a good crisis. I've what? Heard people use, Wait, yeah, what? Uh, is this in you, your you business meetings? That? I... No, that, uh, that, that is not, that is a, that is a term you hear business people use. Never waste a good crisis. I've never heard this yeah. because normally, oh, cat alert. Uh, because it's normally during a crisis. Keep moving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's normally during a crisis that you make the changes you have to make. Yeah. that you kind of wanted to make in the first place. Yeah. So a lot of the changes that a lot of places are making. I could see saying, okay, we had to make this change now. Oh, that actually, it may have been as bad, but hey, we did it. We're done with it. Um, let's continue to do it this way in the future. Yeah. Okay. Like everybody getting th- thrust into work from home and, you know, it yeah. doesn't work for some people, but some people are like, this is kind of nice. And people are just yeah. completely readjusting for that, you know, uh, this, no, this is going to be an ongoing thing, like between all of these like pluses and minuses it's kind of like you know maybe this is something similar but you know i've heard this isn't the right terminology but something like we need a good war to move forward you know watching a lot of the uh the the soviet space race like there's a reason we went the race out of nowhere in the 60s where we probably technologically we, we shoved technology forward to get us to the moon yeah. Right. Like, and, and more and more realizing that as I'm looking back at this and reading and watching things like like just in, the insanity that we pulled off what we did the, when we did is nuts. Mm-hmm. And then notice how little it, it, it's happened since it was thrust upon us. How much development happens when you look back when it was I don't want to use the term a good world war would happen. But the technological pushes ahead in, in technology and right. in airplanes and ships and, and unfortunately weaponry, but all the stuff that comes out of that afterwards is very significant. And it's like we needed something to kick us in the ass to shove things forward than just making fancier iPhones every year. Right. Well, also the, the push of, let's say for the space race of, Oh, NASA needs to, we want to put someone on the moon in the next decade. Great. How much money do you need? No, it doesn't matter. How much money do you need? We will give it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Versus now where NASA's budget is a, especially it's a percentage of the federal budget yeah. is a very small fraction of what it was in the late, in the sixties. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is teeny tiny, and it's still amazing what they do. Absolutely. And, of course, you we know. got this from streaming video games in the next Assassin's Creed, but you get the <laughs> idea. Um, yeah. That's going to be cool, too. <laughs> Um, I, I promise I have some more video game talk coming up a little bit later <laughs> in the show. But anyways, uh, I want to give a shout out to our good friends at Slice on Broadway, uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza from their three locations. They have retracted from PNC Park. That's OK. Nobody else is there. And even a good Pirates game. Um, but uh, Beachview, Carnegie and the East End are our friends up there doing a real good. I need to dig up. We we're talking we talk about this again when Beastman invite uh, uh uh, invaded a while ago <laughs> and I need to pop that video up again. And the only one I saw was under, 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 uh, uh, privacy, but, um, uh, uh, our good friends down there, uh, of course, uh, you know, I've been hearing great things about them being supported with the pandemic and everything. Um, a lot of people at home, a lot of people still getting their pizza and they're the best ones to get in the, in the town. So, um, go check them out. If you're in the area, slice on I know the Riz has been at them a lot. So, uh, good to see. So we have a couple of things. Okay, this is the um, this is the Katie's not here. We're going to talk about Animal Crossing, okay? In full spirit and um, and unity uh, and good vibes to her recovery. Uh, mm-hmm. So this is the one she shared because, of course, um, <laughs> damn it! And I actually actually had to ask her if she did this after <laughs> I asked her if she did this after she told me she was playing with her niece for a few hours, and I was just like. <laughs> That was probably a little awkward to ask, but uh, <laughs> eh, sooner or later, if she doesn't see it, somebody else, somebody else is going to draw it on the internet. Unfortunately, eh, can't, can't see everything these days. Anyways, the point thing we're talking about is Animal Crossing <laughs> fans get fireworks and immediately draw dicks because, of course, um, <laughs> the front. Of, oh, there's somebody also typed out "bitch" apparently in the sky and fireworks. So, oh, of course. 
I mean, wasn't there a thing? Yep, yeah, there's there's one too. Um, I mean, I, I mean, yep. The, wow, that's actually impressive. Uh, <laughs> that's that's kind of cool. Can I get real dick fireworks? Um, that that is. I didn't. I didn't actually look at these pictures, and of course they didn't put it. They didn't put it. These are videos, actually, so you can see them in their full, oh. their full uh, glory here. Um, oh. Okay, yo, know, those are a little different. Those are a little different. I see. Yeah, um, there, there's a rocket ship going off with the uh, two boosters on the back. Most yeah, definitely, that's all yep, it that's is. All that's it is. all yep. it is. That's just um. Yep. That's just yep. Uh, Austin average. Powers. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So there was that, and then this. Of course, I read this, and it didn't mean what I thought it what what I thought it did. Uh, Animal Crossing characters can h- hilariously eat shit again. I thought it was like, I'm like, are they eating poop in Animal Crossing? Um, but apparently, it's the ability that if you run and lose your lose your balance, you'll just like like go face Still first into the you. dirt. <laughs> like, apparently, they took it away. Um, but it's time. The greatest addition to the Island Gateway Simulator: tripping. <laughs> it says here, according to uh, Kotaku. Ka- Ka- um, but man, thank you, Animal Crossing. Just for <laughs> uh, you don't even have to have a Nintendo, and and it's um. By the way, also a follow up because we talked about the analog pocket last week. Went on sale Monday, yesterday, mm-hmm. and sold out basically immediately. Here, I didn't know when they would put out their old like Super Nintendos and stuff like that. You would sell, you would buy them for like they, they, I don't know if they, the time was the the pricing was. Uh, exactly quoted. But I said, you buy this thing for five hundred bucks off of their website, and immediately you can turn around and double that on eBay. So oh, wow. I mean, but that's oh. just these guys. I mean, you saw that thing last week on the show. If you're looking at the visuals, uh, that is like a nice piece of plastic or steel or whatever they're making that thing out of. Like they were not pulling any punches, which also probably means this is highly limited. So um, yeah. if you didn't get that thing, good luck. Uh, apparently, <laughs> so. Um, I, I I hope not that somebody buys them, but like somebody they merge with somebody that can like just grow those yields, you know, that yeah. that that we can readily say, oh hey, I have two hundred dollars now. I'm going to get my Game Boy on uh, right. with that. So in this was this is a this is a player that would play Game Boy all the Game Boy up through Advance, um, Color Advance, and and adapters to get Game Gear, Atari, Lynx, and and Neo Geo Pocket kind of stuff. So it looked incredible. It's but apparently completely inaccessible. <laughs> so, um, was this yours, Dave? Um, Google yeah. announces yeah. the Pixel 4a phone. Yeah, this is their cheap. I, I it's still 350 bucks, which is cheap for the phone you're getting. Mm-hmm. So, it's still it's your Pixel 4a phone. So, it's your plastic back, you know, it's not your, your top of the line phone, but it's from what I'm reading with the specs and everything, it's a good phone. Uh, it's not expandable memory, but it's 128 gigs you're getting for 350. Oh, geez. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's single, uh, single camera in the back, but because it's Google, they can do the night mode on theirs and they can do the um, portrait uh, computationally. So you don't need two cameras. And now the question is, if you're looking, let's say you're an Android person and you're looking for a Pixel phone. Now, if I was an Android person, I would look for a Pixel phone because mm-hmm. they get updates mm-hmm. versus everyone else just because of the way it's set up. The thing is, do you want 5G or not? This does not have 5G. They are coming out with a 4A 5G version later this year mm. for, I think it's $150 more. So, also the question, are you in a place where it matters? Right. right? Are you and a place where for- it matters? For the most, for for pretty much everyone in the U.S., the answer is no. Mm. <laughs> you know, five G really won't matter for a year or two. Do we even have it in Pittsburgh yet? At any capacity that we aware of? You know, I have no idea. But I'm guessing someone has. Someone can pretty much boast and say, "Hey, we have five G coverage in Pittsburgh in this corner of downtown." If you move. Four feet that way, you'll lose 5G. But in this spot right here, we're going to put a dot on the ground. In this six-foot dot, you have 5G incredible speed. So kind of like when um, um, LTE came out where it was really limited and mm-hmm. people were calling it, you know, um, at t which I have, you know, all of a sudden, hey, you have, you know, five you have 4g and like uh, no i don't you're just calling your really fast 3g 4g because Mm -hmm. marketing 
You mean like my my five five G E I have right now? Yeah. 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 No. No. That's not what that is. No. No. And and honestly, the problem is that, as far as I understand, the really quick five G doesn't work well through walls. Mm -hmm. And the one that works well through walls isn't as it's still faster than what you're getting now, but it's still not that fast. And honestly, for what most people are using their phones for, you don't need five G right now. No. No. You, You. I mean, literally, YouTube what um can they can do 4k but if you still have limits on your um on your plan you're just going to burn through your limits a lot more this is um unless you you can imagine a use case um that's probably work related that that you're going to burn that and make it happen um it's this is something that you sit on and you'll get 5g real 5g when you upgrade appropriately and it's at that point you're yeah. not there, there's not gonna be I, I i cannot imagine a use case they were like hey there's a sap but it only works on 5g i i don't think that's happening no, uh, no uh, I, I, can, I can see things working better and did, downloads working like you said i can see definitely mobile hotspots yeah yeah so something or, like that yeah. Like, yeah, I need to video stream anywhere, but it's like, well, you're not because it's not anywhere or, right. or like LTE. I, I, I would argue that LTE hasn't really, you know, didn't have a killer app that you needed to get on or anything. Yeah. It just kind of everything, everything is a steadily increasing curve as opposed to other curves that are problematic right now. Um, and, and if you just ride that curve up by the time you get to the technological, uh, 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 you know, next step, like there'll be stuff for you to get that next step. So, yeah. no. so don't worry about that. Don't buy into the bus with this stuff because no. you don't need 5G if you live out in the boonies. Don't even bother. If you, no. Basically, unless you you do a lot downtown in a metropolitan area, you probably shouldn't right. even consider it. No, no. So, and... and- and honestly, I hate to say it, but if you're, and that's if being out, if you're someone who works in an office that you can get on the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi is still going to be quicker because you're going to be inside and you don't have to worry about walls. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, honestly, I hold on to my phone pretty long. In fact, I am one payment away from paying it off. I am too. And I don't think, I'm not expecting to get one in September unless something dire happens. Well, uh, actually, well, that's uh, that's a story that isn't up there, but that's right. Maybe maybe uh, October, actually. Uh, no, it's official. Yeah, Apple uh, Apple did had to come out because um, F, uh, FEC um, because they won't hit September. That's going to affect their current quarter earnings. So they officially had to come out and say, "We're coming out with a new iPhone. Don't kill us." Mm-hmm. But it's not going to be till October. What things aren't going to be the same as they have been for the last eight years? What are you talking I know, about? Shocking. What? <laughs> what? Also, no lines. Mm-hmm. Well, they've actually kind of were really good about abolishing the lines, anyways. Um, yeah, so the, while we're getting better at that, while we're mentioning Apple and technological yeah. advancement, uh, partner, apparently, uh, uh, you're telling me that there's some updates to the Apple Mac camera. Yes. Yes. This is now. This is a. Uh, the now this is only for the 27 inch iMac. Oh, good. So since you paid so much money for that thing. Yeah. But if you have the 21, if, if you're buying a new 21 inch iMac, you're still stuck. You're still stuck with 720 hmm. for some unknown that is crazy. reason. Crazy. It is crazy. Super. Now, admittedly, mine's 720, and I think my quality is decent. And to be fair, like we only yeah. broadcast the 720 because that's all like last I knew Facebook and most uh, uh, outlets will take for our streaming right. capabilities on right. this but, show. But but it's almost at this point, where are you getting 720p front-facing cameras given that most phones mm-hmm. have at least 1080? You know, yeah, they do 880 and they do 4K phones j- just to get the front-facing selfies. So Apple makes has so many... You know, they're selling tens of hundreds of millions of phones a year with those cameras. They could put those cameras into the iMacs, into the MacBooks that have more room and just boom. Then it, it's, it's not going to cost you that much more because I, 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 even iMacs, no, there's no cheap Mac, but it's, 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 they did increase it. They finally increased the 27 inch resolution to 1080. 
Mm -hmm. But the cheapest iMac 27 inch is 1800. I'll call it $1,800. Yeah. And they did get rid of the fusion drive too. Okay. I I heard problems with that. I don't know if I've had one of those. I have one on the one I'm using right now. I have a 2018 MacBook Pro and I think it's just an SSD. I think I skipped fusion because I went from like a 2013 to a 2018. Yeah. So yeah, they the the fusions were only left in the IMAX. Okay. um, Because they're actually they're they're half spinning drives, half SSDs. And the only reason I got it, it was on the lower end. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I was able to get a terabyte worth of storage versus the entry level SSD, I think was 128. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I I don't want to do 128. Yeah, that hurts. That that, that, that's and I don't want to step up because of Apple and their prices for storage and have to mm-hmm. step up an extra few hundred dollars just to get up to two fifty six. Now they're starting off at two fifty six at least. So and they're better with the uh, video with the that's, compression for the photos. So you can act, you can live off of that almost. And I and I look at that seventeen hundred or eighteen hundred. I was like, yeah, I don't get a computer with less than sixteen gigs. Yeah, across the board. Um, just for video things and number of apps and stuff. So now I but, know I don't, I, and I think all they did was also upgrade video, the internals. video production but, mindset. Well, yeah. I, I want to yeah, yeah. say you may be fine with it. Um, yeah. if you're getting one, right. No, what I'm saying though, is that if for the 27 inch iMac, you're able to, uh, to do a, a, a user upgradable, easy user upgradable for Ram. Mm-hmm. That's the only oh, thing you, you still can are. actually upgrade. Oh, yeah. good for the twenty or the twenty sevens. You can actually there's a there's a door nice. in the back. Pop it out. There's four spots for your uh, RAM. You can just manually put them in. You can't even do it on a Mac Mini anymore. It's nuts. It's mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah, that's that's the one negative. Oh, I shouldn't say one, but it's one of the big negatives for me about Max. Now, well, mainly, I haven't upgraded this thing in three years. I think I have it, mm-hmm. and I have four eight gigs of RAM. And it honestly, I but I don't do heavy, heavy processing no, on it. No, no, it, 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 And the main reason I got it, honestly, was the uh, the 27-inch screen. Yeah. And using it as basically an extra TV. Are you using your iMac camera right now? Yeah. Okay. So you don't have, you didn't throw a Logitech on it or anything. So, <laughs> of course. And then, I mean, you guys, of course, are seeing me through a professional camera uh, <laughs> on the broadcast, but you, you, I don't even think I'm 720 on this, this, this one that's coming to you, Dave. This is, um, um, this is, I mean, this is an old Logitech. Uh, this is an old. I know everything just got crazy for you. This, this is this is how <laughs> this is how the remote people see me, and this is like I don't even know what era this is. Um, yeah. It's hard to even get a, a model number off of it, but uh, it, it's uh, it's it's two megapixels, two megapixels. Was that, was that a, he's, he's, he's just hurting at that one. Oops, I left the wire. Yeah, that's. There. Hold on a second. There we go. There we go. Okay, uh, I but... actually have the the stream for the uh, for everyone else down below looking at you. And okay, that that okay. Mm-hmm, <laughs> yeah, for everyone I else, need, I, I was actually on the tumbleweed ride that I, Zorg was doing. I gave away all my C nine twenties for a cause that isn't around anymore. So, mm. <sighs> could I ask for them back? You think? Uh, <laughs> I'm finding more uses and wish I had them and don't want to drop another 90 bucks a piece. Uh, so, yeah, if they're not using them. Anyways, <laughs> um, hmm, hmm, hmm. But yeah, so, I mean, uh, the internals were upgraded with the iMac. So if you're looking, I mean, it, the thing is, it, it's always the same thing with computers and phones. If you if you don't need it, I hate to say it this way, it can sound like someone's dad. <laughs> if you don't need it, don't buy it. Yeah. You know, yeah. If, if it's like, hey, this is working good enough for what I need right now. Do I really want to have the new and, shiny? Yeah. And it's always buy as much as you can afford. Right. It's always that's right. always the case. So. Right. Um, speaking of what we can afford, are you ready to drop 30 bucks for Mulan? Ah, uh, so it officially came. I just caught this. <laughs> this, this dropped at like two 30 today. And apparently I'm in the mobile version of this. Um, Mulan, it seems is coming to Disney plus what the hell? There we go. It's coming to Disney plus September 4th, but you will still have to pay $30 to watch it. It will be able to use it in the Disney Plus app, but it will be a one-time charge to watch it. And I believe that may be a rental. Oh, I believe. 
So now Disney says wow. that this is um this is intended to be a one time thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. With no, there is no intention for this going on as an ongoing type of service. We'll see what happens. Um so and, and also you must already be a Disney Plus subscriber in order to do this. To pay to have the privilege yeah, of to pay paying thirty dollars. So this, this well, first, your let's your immediate reaction to this this news. Well, without knowing that a lot more details, because like I, I said, and it I don't came know, out late, and I don't know yeah. your excitement about Mulan live action. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> honestly, I watch it. Yeah, yeah. but it's the, it, there's it, no it Lion like, King. I, I have to watch it. I have to go out and watch. But also, I hate to say this is one reason why we don't go out to movies. Because, you know, even going to a matinee and the, with the popcorn and the this and moving you out. Paid this. And then you would have paid this. You would have paid the same amount. Exactly. And, and honestly, I very, and this is just me personally, very few movies, and, I, and it wouldn't be Mulan, not just, just because of, you know, it would actually get me going out to where I want to go out and First of all, brave the crowds now, but pay, yeah, say yeah. I want to have first day access. Yes, I, I I do not want to wait two weeks to go out when the prices are going to be half the price. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to just get my hands on this. And you know, if you're a huge Disney fan, I imagine people with kids. Even though I, I don't know. I guess. If this was Frozen Three, I could see people with kids maybe a little more. I don't know how big your Mulan is. your child, hypothetically, yeah. Uh, yeah. has been sitting at home watching his Disney Channel and getting and got bombarded with Mulan ads uh, yeah. leading up to the the yeah. potential well, it May release or whatever, right? Yeah, or March. No, it's supposed to be late March, I think. Um, maybe, yeah, because I thought it was it was it, because I think it was coming around around my birthday. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, so, so it's in the hit, it's in the kids' heads, likely. So, yeah. like, that, uh, that Disney is good at that, yes. Yeah, that's, that's what we're, that's what we're hitting here. Um, of course, deal breaker, uh, uh, via, uh, Amanda via Steve, um, not worth it at all, basically because no Mishu the Dragon, which I think was Andy Murphy <laughs> in the original movie. I don't remember much of the original movie, but seeing the trailer for this, it did look like a good movie to watch. With like my yeah. with my AMC pass, March twenty first was originally. Wow, I can't believe. Wow, I, the movies that early were going. Um, related Black Window, Black Widow has been pushed to November sixth. Happy birthday, Missy. Um, <sighs> weekend of. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, wait, we'll uh, wait, wait, wait. Currently set for theatrical release. We'll follow the same quick path to your TV. Um, oh, we don't we don't have that news yet, but we'll see okay. how we're doing in October after everybody goes mm-hmm. back to school. So, yeah, yeah, just um, well, my, my my my. I mean, honestly, now the the one thing I didn't see, and I just did a couple of perusals of websites, is like, okay, it's thirty dollars. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming this is just going to be eventually part of Disney Plus. See, yeah, but eventually. How long? How, but how, how we... wait for it? Well, okay, yeah. so Scoob came out, right? Memorial okay. Weekend, I which I think was a we, the weekend or a week after it came out, it was twenty dollars, maybe twenty five dollars to purchase. Rental okay. was maybe fifteen or twenty dollars. I think twenty dollars, twenty dollars a rent, twenty five to purchase, I believe. And it was a movie I wanted to see. My mo- it's a movie I probably was going to take my mother to see. Okay. okay, um, we have a thing about dog movies. I have to take her to the dog movies. It usually ends up being about Christianity and we're all crying at the end because the dog is inevitably going to die. Scooby was about none of those things, by the way. <laughs> Good. Just to clear. Also, it was fantastic. Um, so I was like, we're going to watch the Scooby movie for Memorial Day mm-hmm. weekend. And and we did. And now it's in my collection for movies anywhere. And then like a month later, I see it for 10 bucks on iTunes. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, that's part of it. But it's like, but I got to see it then. You know? Right. But it feels right. well, less... Yeah, like I said... Yeah, when you when you can have appointment viewing like that. Yeah, yeah, and it, 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 it definitely it, works. Something new and and and, and now I, I think Mulan we're going to see on Disney Plus by Christmas. Yeah, like without extra charge. 
I can wait for that. I and and yeah. and to me, going to the theater would make it feel more important. Um, but I get kids and everything like is a different thing. But that's yeah. one thing. I mean, after all, we, we just recently saw the uh, live action Dumbo on Disney Plus, mm-hmm. and when we were watching it, Bruce said, "I don't remember seeing the cartoon." Mm-hmm. But you good know, news. Or, or if she saw it, it's been so long. So we said, "Okay, well, we'll watch the cartoon." It is quite different. Oh, and it was like. This has nothing, no. literally, other than the fact there's an elephant yep. and a mouse. Yep. There's literally no relation between the there two. There were some fun allusions to some of the mice. And if I recall, yes. the crows would be problematic today. Oh, uh, I yes. believe. Yeah. So. Well, I, I'll say this I saw a couple different people. I saw a couple, I saw some African American entertainers come out and say, Yes, even though the crows were supposed to be basically blackface entertainers, yeah, the portrayal was not a negative portrayal. Okay, okay, and, and again, crows. just so, member berries. I just yeah. remember oh, reading no, no, that when no, it came it out was. and everything. No, no, so, no, no. But yeah. yeah, and I mean, I saw people say, "Yeah, it that, that those are that's supposed to represent blackface but there was, minstrel shows." But there's also no talking animals, issues. anything like that, right? No. So I mean, that's no. that's goes along yeah. with it. I but, mean, it literally was like. Okay. Um, it was fine. Other than, other than the flying elephant, there's literally nothing but in that, that. Is that is nice though? Because I feel I, <laughs> you know, I can go watch the new Lion King, and then I can go watch the original Lion King. <laughs> like I love that 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 ability is there. But anyways, yeah. I, I, I need to move on with this. Cause <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> um, yeah, who knows what's happening with other movies? I, I, I my friend, that friend that works at a theater, I eat. He's watching that comeback date continue to push back and has been. He, I think the earliest date mm. he got was like late June when we had the original tenant date. Mm. And it's been like every two weeks it gets pushed back another few weeks as these cancellations keep coming. Yeah. And I cannot, I, I can't imagine, I can't imagine um, a mass of people going to the movie theaters before Christmas. I really can't. Well, let me say this. And I can see. If a theater op- if the theater owner would open up, I could see people going out. And some have. Some some independents have. Yeah. So I, I can I can see that just looking at when I see pictures of people who are cra- on crowded beaches. I know outdoors, but still right. no not right. even close. I can see where if you said, Hey, movie theater, we're going to show we can't show the lace because they're not releasing it to us, but we're going yep. to show this. You can come out. Like I know the well, this is kind of related to this uh, local theater to to me the uh, the Oaks and Oakmont. Mm-hmm. You can rent that out. I saw that for private parties. So that and admittedly, the Oaks is not a first run theater. No, not anymore. It, it's it's uh, mostly live events. It's Bubba, mostly live events. I and think I like saw that. Bubba Hotep there. <laughs> Bruce well, Campbell movie. Yeah. Uh, now, most of the time I go there, it's because of live events or um, drag bingo. And they usually have like that's where I believe that's where when um, Kevin Smith was, you know, yes. has movies and has his speaking mm-hmm. afterwards that you can get. Yeah. Right. No, that's I, and, and I like that, you know, that stuff can potentially still happen. It's going to be a higher dollar event. Like the 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 ones that have the room can be creative with it, hopefully. Right. So. Right. And, and I mean, like I said, this is, again, being creative and working around what you can work with. They're saying, hey, you and I've seen them post pictures of people who have like their kid's birthday party there mm-hmm. because you have access to the movie equipment. You have access to the snack bar. You and it's a big enough theater. It's a few, you know, if it's a few hundred, it's one of these old theaters, single single thing theaters that actually survived and was what, re, I don't want to say repurposed. Ho- but Hollywood theater was great for this, too. And I loved going to it until there was like a shakedown on, on an ownership down there. Um, but again, like I've never felt like yeah, it, it, with the amount of people that were ever in there, I never felt like there would have been a social distancing problem, but you know, oh, yeah. in a good way, you know, but it was also huge, but anyways, yeah. all right. I want to roll back the video games cause I got a few quick okay. hitters on this real quick. Uh, first of all, just an update, a couple quick updates. Here's one. Microsoft confirms that Halo Infinite will be a free to play multiplayer game, or at least the, 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 that the multiplayer component of it. Um, and will be running at 120 frames per second. Ooh. Holy crap. 
That is going to be smooth as butter. I, presuming wow. you bought that four hundred dollar piece of hardware to run it on. I'll be watching it. I'll be playing it on my original three hundred and sixty and hoping yeah. it's not choking. Um, and, and your TV can handle that too. Yeah, well, my TV. Well, yeah, my TV's not getting anywhere near that. So no. <laughs> let's be honest about that. Um, there is a new Battletoads game is officially coming August twentieth. Very excited for this. Also, this is a rare game. Things I didn't think about. Rare is owned by Microsoft now, which means game pass is getting the new battle toads on the 20th so no i i have a confession i have a confession by the way i have bought i have purchased my first purchased xbox one disc that'll be coming tomorrow Ooh! because i watched the new transformers series ah on xbox and i'm like i want to go back and play the games and i do have the first of the games uh war for cybertron on my steam but i didn't have a computer to play it readily so I was looking, and, and they took everything Transformers down because the Activision's license um, oh. it, uh, went, just like the old Marvel games. Um, and so you can't buy it digitally. So I found a copy of Transformers Devastation, which is the old school style, cell shaded hack and slash Transformers game. Which you're, and I'm sorry, after I see a visual of you are Optimus Prime and you fight Devastator, old ass green <laughs> Devastator, I am down for this. And I found it for $22 on Amazon and it's going to be at my house tomorrow. I will play that disc. I will. I, it's going to be the stupidest hack and slash game. But man, yeah. I am, it's like when I went back and want, bought Wolverine, Wolverine Origins a couple of years ago for the 360. Horrible movie. Fantastic game. Fantastic <laughs> game. Hack and slash game. Best yeah. Wolverine video game representation. Period. Wow. Anyways. I also get the Deadpool game, which I think they released. Um, so, sorry. All of that to say, yeah, B- Battle Tools is coming out. It's going to be cool. Uh, uh, let's see. What else we got here? Um, more confirmations on the X Cloud Project X Cloud being um, worked into Game Pass. Um, Game Pass updated a logo that a lot of people are making. It was slow news day apparently yesterday. Um, it will be coming to Android first, iOS expected later Ooh, that's a bit unusual yeah their beta was really limited and only included master chief uh collection steam had a lot of trouble bringing their stream link to the iphone or ios devices um okay i feel like this is likely a related issue that they have to suss out so it is going to be easier for them to put on android but hey it's it's wrapped in with that 15 dollar ultimate plan that many will have anyways so that that works out um and and if you haven't it, it's going to be worthwhile that and being able to, if you if the, your game is not on game pass when you have the ability to stream it to your phone to play from the xbox mm. because assassin's yeah. creed isn't in game pass also amazing but um let's see and finally i want to throw this out there Alto is coming to more platforms. Alto's Adventure and Alto's Odyssey in the Alto yeah. collection. I believe that includes like all the consoles. Uh, it had already oh, wow. been on Windows um, computer. Uh, Windows computer? Yes. <laughs> on, on your Windows computer. Jeez, what am I doing? Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's coming soon. The Epic's Game Store, Xbox, PlayStation 4, and Nintendo Switch. Um, okay. No price, but these were like five bucks on the iPhone. Um, mm-hmm. This is it's your snowboarding basically. It's a it's a downhill yeah. snowboarding game, and it is the calmest thing that you could play. I highly recommend grabbing these. Um, you even just go grab it on the iPhone. I think you can buy them as a pack on there. Um, it's from Snowman Games. Also, do the the really good Skate It game that's on uh, Apple Arcade. Uh, so highly, highly recommend. There, there is a, there is this um, um, uh, endless meditation mode where it's not, it's just you go. Like you're, there's no, there's no like like you die or anything. It's just okay. Just, I have to, I have to look at because for for a little bit of time they were offering them at no cost. They were, they were actually, and I downloaded both and nice. I started to play it, but I hate to say it, I kept dying. <laughs> and that kind of that kind of that that you know dying kind of kills your book kills your chill mm-hmm. <laughs> um but if there's a meditation mode where i can just keep doing it and just that that sounds a lot better um 
So or yeah, maybe... no, highly recommended. Uh, 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 but, oh, yeah. but with the music and everything, it was just oh, yeah. a nice yeah. soothing to bed be- before bed game for me. You know, I, it mm-hmm. just it like it really was nice for that. Um, we were asked in the chat room, and you may need to play this game to calm yourself after a topic such as this, um, because the the question came up in the chat room. So Steve, what do you guys think about this TikTok BS? Uh, yeah. Yes, it's BS. Uh, I, 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 guys, are you ready for international incident over your TikTok app? Uh, <laughs> um, because I don't. Um, I think I think Microsoft is going to end up effing themselves over, and yeah. um, it's not going to be good for Microsoft. All of no. this for TikTok, for TikTok. Mm. Um, I don't know. But I love already the TikTok community reaction of this is how you use TikTok if you happen to be banned in the United States. Listen, what did we? What 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 was the thing? What was the thing I've been saying? Um, I've been saying wrestling finds a way because there's all these weird, you know, much like we were talking about mm-hmm. the events, just finding a way around, you know, way to continue. I think TikTok will find a way, yeah. <laughs> and whatever that is, um, I I. I don't know where this is going, but there's enough sentiment for it to be an issue, I guess. Um, I, I, I mean, Go ahead. I, I'm just kind of wondering, technologically, how, unless there's an order and... Oh, yeah, we don't know legally how we can do this either. We don't well, legally I would, how... I, I, would say, I would say, A, legally, B, technologically, how could you do it? Because uh, yes, okay. yes, if you if it's through the iOS store yes. and the Android store, they can remove it. Mm-hmm. That's assuming you don't have an Android that you sideloaded it on. But here's the here's this here's this TikTok video showing you how to tell your phone that you're in Canada. Yeah, yeah. There's Again, VPNs it's not that hard. No, and VPNs and and all kinds of things. Mm-hmm. If people are going to TikTok, and if you tell a 13 year old they can't do something on their computer, guess what they're going to do figuring out a way around whatever you mm-hmm. set up. I still remember when we figured a way around all of the front ends on all of the computers that they had installed in the library <laughs> to, to play Minesweeper. Because um, they said, you can't play Minesweeper. And we said, yeah. yes, I will. Because no. <laughs> I'm a teenager and you're not going to tell me what to do. And yeah. I know how a damn computer works. Uh, <laughs> and, and generally, the old... Uh, which I'm close to, but the olds don't, mm-hmm. or, or they don't understand. And you, like I said, you, no, I don't and, forget about legally. I hate to say legally that'll be in the courts. And if they'll be battled out for months and months and months and months and months until it's basically a mute point, but, or people just lose interest in it and then move on. There will be TikTok. But, yeah. on, there will be a, there will be people TikToking on election day. That's what oh, I yeah. am fairly confident oh, yeah. in that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You like that? We did that without entirely getting political. I think. I think. I, I, you know, I, I will say this. I will say this. Trying to be fair, mm-hmm. I could see both sides. Or after all, it was Tipper Gore. I mean, I'm going back in time now. Whoa! Was, I'm going back to Tipper Gore and basically the morality police talking about all those horrible, horrible video games back in the 80s that were ruining kids because they, they were so violent. And those are the Democrats back then mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who were saying, we have to make sure we have to do something about these video games and mm-hmm. how they're ruining these kids with all this violence everywhere. Yep. And even they were like, Shut up. And, and not, not respectfully to as a human being, but you don't know what you're talking about. Shut up. Sit down. Same thing. Now, so, you don't know what you're talking about. Now, yeah. Still an so, awesome thing and still political, if I can throw in with this while we're at go it. For it. Um, go for go it. catch some highlights and best ofs. The, um, the uh the congressional hearings with the big wigs from all the companies um it is pretty fantastic when you go back and look at that and people make like some interesting notes and comparisons is very revealing um it will uh either enforce or help c- reconstruct an opinion you had about companies uh, uh it, it will um it, if you have an interest of what is google doing to us is facebook the devil you know um it, it's it's and and of course there's there's a lot of bullshit in there too, but um it's it's worthwhile to at least know what happened 
and some of the highlights. Just just go check some write ups on I don't know in Gadget Verge things like that uh, or whatever your technically minded uh, uh, source of news may be. Um, and they should have some good good um, roles with it. So yeah. It, <laughs> Um, and yes, it's, it's, it's a good job on this. It's not about China. It's about Tulsa. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, um, you know, and once again, you know, it seems to be all some people want to talk about, but I think there's more important for uh, things for us to be hemming and hawing about, uh, than TikTok, um, especially these days. And the reason I can't have Dave Potter in my studio to do this. Um, so, um, and the fact that your test took two weeks to and come back. And my test took over two weeks to come back. Over two weeks, To yeah. figure out if I could I could pupil again. Yeah. Um, I know somebody that had symptoms, and it took him two days longer than me to get his back. So, yeah. I mean, cool. We would have known why or how things happened. So, I don't know. Yeah. It's um, if, if only you, you were a professional sports athlete, you could have same-day test. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, the, the, okay, the, we're, we're turning into another podcast. Yes. Uh, and I don't want to do that, but I will say, um, I, I, you know, since I'm down this road, I'm just going to throw out some plugs of things that I heard from other podcasts. Um, our, uh, Back to Work is a podcast I listen to sometimes, and they recommend another podcast called You Are Not So Smart. And I did mm. listen to their one about masks and why yes. masks are such a um, com- uh, uh, big topic right now. Um, so that is worth a listen. And I, I think this show generally deals with confirmation bias, um, yeah. from what I yeah. understand. So um, I, 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 I'm a longtime listener of You Are Not So Smart. Okay. And it is a it is deep dive. Uh, the guy is very entertaining. Mm-hmm. The the host, he's very entertaining. Uh, been doing it for a long time, and yeah, a lot of it is confirmation bias and going kind of behind the 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 how the headlines. Most headlines are only very shallow. He does a very very deep dive. Yeah, well, it was an hour and a half on masks. Yeah, and it's not just about masks. Yeah. It's about like how did we get here? Why is this happening? Mm-hmm. It's talking about the us versus them. Um, you know, it, it's very it, you know the the mixed messaging that happened at the beginning of this. So it, it is a in which I was waiting for it because whenever they, we got the weird messaging around the late March, I'm just like, we're gonna analyze this in July and be like, well, this is what happened, and it's yeah. happening right now. Um, also, as you mentioned, um, new podcast from Professor Buzzkill, not on our network, by the way. We we do the uh, disclaimer client of Psychic Media Services um, here and there, but not we don't do the podcast for them. They're on our network or anything, but uh, but definitely worthwhile. Um, the uh, he, he, he also good when we talk about, especially um, if you have if you're trying to sort your mind on issues of today like um systematic uh uh uh, racism uh uh, confederate statues uh slavery uh uh, world war ii gun control like through the scope of and you hear like a politician or somebody on a talk show spouting something like uh uh, first thing hitler did was take away his guns that's that find out why that's untrue when you hear that and um you know and he's really good about being especially lately very um, on topic when something like that comes up to mm-hmm. roll that back into, okay, everybody's saying this on CNN, Fox News, whatever. What did Hitler do? And da, 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 da. And, right. and, and, and the point is, no, not really. Not really. Actually, very, actually gave rights for guns. Um, mostly. But listen to that for that deal. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Yeah, get more details there. <laughs> Get more details. Yes. Um, <laughs> so get smarter. And also, um, listen to John Oliver. He had a really good piece on history this week. So, uh, yeah. Random random plugs. Uh, uh, Dave, give me your random plug while we're at it. Okay. Well, for myself, it would be uh, Prof Pod on, uh, as, I've, as I said on our podcast, Tiny Shutter Podcast, available pretty much everywhere since we switched to anchor for our back end. So we're just not just iTunes anymore, even though we're majority after all, we're a show about iPhone photography. We still have a couple of Android listeners and we appreciate those people. Still have a couple. <laughs> we still have a few and we appreciate them. They're nice it. people. They're just, you know, confused. That's all. 
That's how we talk about it. They're confused. Um, but there's nice uh, people it, on both platforms. <laughs> We are. We, we love everybody. Uh, but yeah, pretty much on Instagram for pretty much more photography based things. Um, my photos also go over to Twitter, but I get a lot more yelling and screaming on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, you do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and like I said, uh, tinyshutter.com for, for the podcast. Uh, and then you can get links to everything from the from the website there for the for for the podcast. Um. <laughs> I know. Uh, sorry, follow up from what we're talking about. Amanda said that Tim Cook looked uh, bored as fuck. Oh, I said, oh, shoot. I wasn't supposed to say that. Uh, <laughs> I was supposed to say the and letters. That's what happens when Missy's not in the office. <laughs> oh, she hasn't been a producer on this show in like three months. No. Come on. <laughs> We've been left to our devices for a while before she went to California. She's officially been in California for a month, by the way. So I don't know why I'm telling you this. I'm lonely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, you know what hopefully you're better off and, and to bring another podcast in hopefully you're better off than scott johnson it's okay we got sleeping dog over here to keep me company and uh <laughs> <laughs> guys hopefully it's more energetic for the next one. Oh, it stops barking at crap so uh thank you guys for joining us it's been the awesome cast please check out everything thank you dave for joining me and filling in <laughs> both of my co-hosts apparently <laughs> we'll see you guys next week in some shape or form uh, hopefully everybody's recovered from their hospital visits by then, uh, including Dave's dog. Uh, we'll see you then. Uh, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.